Hey everyone, and welcome back to your fourth stimulus package and news update. My name is Josh, and in today's video, we have a lot of news to get into. But first, if you would like to receive two free stocks from Webull valued up to $2,300, make sure to claim them by clicking my link, which you will find in the description box below. Okay, so it's finally Friday, and that also means that by the end of the day, they're supposed to reach an agreement on the framework for reconciliation. Being that Democrats are nowhere near reaching an agreement with Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, I don't see a way of it possibly happening. Also, according to the White House, they would really like to have a vote on reconciliation and infrastructure by next week. As we know, the self-imposed deadline to vote on the bipartisan infrastructure bill was already set to October 31st by Nancy Pelosi. Of course, she's already pushed that deadline back on several occasions, so it wouldn't really be too big of a surprise if she delayed the vote again. After all, until progressive Democrats get Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema to 100% agree on the framework for the reconciliation package, they won't approve of the infrastructure bill either. And yesterday, Kirsten Sinema, rather than Joe Manchin, was taking the majority of the heat from liberals. On Reddit, Kirsten Sinema started trending as five military veterans on Kirsten Sinema's advisory board resigned from their roles just this week slamming her, saying that she was one of the principal obstacles to progress. In a letter to the senator, the veterans expressed their frustration with her refusal to change the Senate filibuster in order to protect voting rights, failure to support prescription drug negotiations, her opposition to parts of the reconciliation package, and also for not voting on the January 6th commission. There are also many reports within the Democratic Party that they would like to have her primaried in the next election, replaced with another Democrat who would be much more likely to go along with their initiatives. Okay, so back to the reconciliation package. They're currently looking at a bill coming in at a final price tag of around $1.75 trillion. The problem is how exactly they're going to find the package. Up to this point, Kirsten Cinema has been against raising corporate and individual tax rates, which is another reason that she's receiving so much heat from the left. However, last night, the head of the House Ways and Means Committee, Richard Neal, said that he spoke with Cinema for around a half hour and that she is ready to reach some type of deal. However, what type of deal they actually get, including what's in the package, how much is spent, and how it's even funded, is still unclear. We've already heard that tuition-free community college is officially out of the bill. Both Manchin and Cinema have also opposed the expansion of Medicare to include dental, vision, and hearing. Senator Joe Manchin has also been against many of the climate provisions that progressives are seeking in the bill. So, at the end of the day, how much are the two sides going to be willing to compromise? And yesterday afternoon, when Manchin was asked by reporters if a deal would be reached by the end of this week, he said that it would not be happening anytime soon. While he did say that they were making progress, it doesn't seem that he has high hopes at getting this thing agreed to by next week. Behind closed doors though, it's being noted that Senators Bernie Sanders and Joe Manchin are still bickering over the overall price tag. Senator John Tester is describing the argument as a difference in opinion. So basically what happened as being reported by Axios anyways, there were a couple of different witnesses in this incident. The first one was Senator John Tester. He's a Democrat of Montana. And then also Senator Chris Coons, a Democrat in Delaware. So basically what happened is that Joe Manchin said that I'm comfortable with nothing, like nothing at all in this reconciliation package. Bernie Sanders then responded back with that we need to do three and a half trillion dollars. I'm pretty sure at this point we're not going to be doing three and a half trillion dollars. Manchin then said, I'm comfortable with zero, forming a zero with his thumb and index finger, meaning that he's comfortable with not having a reconciliation package at all. Zero dollars spent in this reconciliation package. And then Tester reiterated, saying that he believes the West Virginia Democrat can live with himself if the Senate doesn't pass any of the president's two trillion to three point five trillion dollar package. And then, of course, like I mentioned, there was another witness, Senator Chris Coons. And he said that there was a vigorous 10 minute discussion. Bernie Sanders said $6 trillion. So in the beginning, they were wanting, I believe $6 trillion progressive Democrats were anyways, they eventually settled on three and a half trillion dollars. And then of course, Joe Manchin said his top line number was 1.5 trillion. And now we're anywhere between 1.75 to $2 trillion. So there's a huge difference of opinion in how much should be spent in this package, which really 
shouldn't come as much of a surprise. We have Joe Manchin, he's a centrist Democrat in West Virginia. West Virginia is one of the reddest states in the country. And then of course we have a self-declared independent socialist in Bernie Sanders, so it's, it's not too big of a surprise that the two have a huge difference of opinion. So according to Senator Chris Coons, Manchin said we shouldn't do it at all. Coons recalled himself making the goose egg symbol as he recounted the conversation. He said Manchin continued, quote, this will contribute to inflation. We've already passed the American Rescue Plan. We should just pass the infrastructure bill and, you know, pause for six months. So it's pretty clear at this point that Joe Manchin is not a huge fan of this reconciliation package. If it were up to him, he probably wouldn't pass any additional spending. There is obviously a lot of political pressure put on him. There's 48 Democrats that really want this reconciliation package to go through. And then we just have two moderate Democratic senators that aren't that big of a fan. So obviously all this pressure is making them spend something, something being $1.5 trillion, which is still a lot of money. But clearly, as you can see by this conversation, Bernie Sanders wants to spend a lot. He wants to spend at least $6 trillion. And then if it were up to Joe Manchin, he would spend zero, pretty much. Now, with all this pushback from the two moderate Democrats in the Senate, some people are beginning to speculate that Manchin and Sinema may end up leaving the Democratic Party. That doesn't necessarily mean that they would then become Republicans, but it could mean being independents. Here is the White House Deputy Press Secretary addressing rumors that Manchin may be leaving the Democratic Party. And the question on Joe Manchin, um, there were reports that he was thinking about becoming an independent. He seemed to confirm or to say that he had offered uh, make to the White House and to maybe to Senate leadership that maybe he would become an independent if that is what the White House or Senate leadership wanted him to do. Can, can you talk about that? Does the White House have a position on that? Do they have a problem with Joe Manchin being in the Democratic Party? <laughs> Uh, I think Joe Manchin spoke to this uh, pretty clearly uh, recently, uh, as humanly possible. He was very clear uh, about uh, when he was asked this directly. Uh, I, I really don't have anything uh, and anything else to, to say about that. Look, the re relationship that the president has, that we have with Joe Manchin, is strong. It's a mutual. The president has a mutual respect, and they have they have shared values. And so, again, we've been working in good faith with him. He's been working in good faith with us. And he actually spoke uh, spoke to that, I, I believe, yesterday recently, and was very clear. And so you want the, the White House wants some in the Democratic Party. You can just say that. I, 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 that's his for his. That's his decision to make. That's not my decision to make. I'm not gonna. Dis, you know, we're not gonna say what you know what party somebody belongs to. That's for that's for them to make, and that's you know for for him to answer, which he did. He answered that very very clearly. I cannot say the words that he used from here, but he did very much answer that question. <laughs> And I'm going to I'm going to leave because I leave that there because my daughter at some point is going to see this and so she'll call me out so I can't use those words. Uh, but look, we uh, the president has uh, you know respect uh, for Senator Manchin. Again, he sees him as a partner in this in this in this process and trying to get uh, work done for the American people, trying to pass uh, this economic uh, you know economic uh, bill for the middle class, as I've been saying. And so this is critical. This is important and we need to get it done. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that Democrats are not going to get someone much further on the left than Joe Manchin elected in the state of West Virginia. West Virginia, like I just mentioned, is one of the reddest states in the country, so it's really a surprise that they elected a Democrat in the first place. It would pretty much be like Republicans expecting to get a more conservative Republican in Maine replacing Susan Collins, for example. It's just not happening. Okay, so in regards to funding the reconciliation package and all this new spending, as we've heard, the Biden administration does not want to raise taxes on Americans earning less than $400,000 per year. However, with all this extra spending and supply chain issues on top of that, a great amount of inflation has definitely taken place. One reporter asked the deputy press secretary, how is this inflation that's taking place any different than a new tax? A follow up about something that you just said. I you guys say that President Biden does not want to raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000 a year. But there's a new Fox poll that finds 83% of registered voters are noticing bills for groceries and everyday items increasing. So how is that any different than a new tax? Well, look, and when you say 
can you give me a little bit more? Like, what's the? Well, the supply chain is all backed up. There are bottlenecks, empty shelves, prices going up. People are paying more, and so how is that any different than a new tax? So I, I would say this. Um, you know, we are we're dealing with a historic and evolving uh, pandemic that is impacting our economy. Right? We have seen it for the past year and a half. That's what people have been dealing with, and uh, it is it is having an outsized impact on our global supply chain. And the president understands how much a, a squeeze it is uh, for when uh, families see their prices rise, and so he understands that. And that's why he's we've been using every tool in our tool belt to make sure uh, that uh, we deal with that in a in a real way, so that people understand that the president is doing everything that he can uh, to deal. To to deal with those issues. So there's a couple of things. Um, so we got to think about the, the progress that we've made on how far we've come for the, for the, for the mess that we inherited from the previous president. Uh, we, we've already averaged 600,000 jobs, which I mentioned at the top. At my, at the top. Uh, those are jobs per month uh, compared to just 60,000 before we came in. That's almost 5 million total in eight months. We've increased economic growth projection for 2021 and more than half and then have new unemployment claims. So we are in a different place than where we were before the president uh, came into came into office. And so we're going to continue uh, building on basically the American Rescue Plan. This is why we're trying to to pass the president's domestic economic policies. And according to the deputy press secretary, former President Donald Trump was the one who left us in this mess and the Biden administration has been making really great progress. While unemployment has been decreasing and jobs have been added, that was to be expected given the environment we were in, so it wasn't too much of a surprise. If anything, according to economists, we should have been making even better progress during this time. Regardless, inflation continues to be a huge issue facing many Americans, whether at the gas pumps, grocery store, or practically anywhere else. And this inflation, more than anyone else, is definitely being felt by low-income Americans who maybe at one time were being stretched working paycheck to paycheck and are now forced to cut back even more. But on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, if you would like to receive a couple free stocks from Webull, make sure to quickly claim them by clicking my link, which you will find in the description box below. To receive the first stock, you will need to fully open an account. Then to receive the second free stock, which will be valued up to $2,000, you'll need to make a qualifying deposit of at least $5. And even if you aren't all that interested in investing or continue to invest at this point in time, you can always sell the free stocks you receive and transfer that money, however much they're worth, right back to your bank account. So free stocks or free money is completely up to you. So once again, I hope everyone has a great and safe rest of their day and I'll see you in the next video.